Hey Candle Fam! If you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow, and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my hot throw results uh, from Candle Science's new 2022 holiday collection. So I've tested all seven scents in 464 soy, and I am here to share with you the results of that. So I'm kind of doing this video impromptu. I just kind of wanted to talk to you all informally about my process for testing as well as the results. All of these fragrances, um, are from their 2022 holiday collection. And so what I did was I tested them all in 464 soy at a 10% strength. And prior to burning them, I did let the candles cure for a full two weeks. So that's why this video has kind of taken me some time to post um, because I wanted to wait the full two weeks that they recommend and then thoroughly test them. So not just like burn them once, but burn them multiple times and sometimes I burn them in different rooms of the house. So what I wanted to do was show you how I made these test candles and kind of give you basically my process for making test candles. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you my results, the HT results, um, two weeks later. So if you did just wanna hear the results, then I will have timestamps in the description box. If you wanna see what my process is for making test candles, um, it's literally the same for almost all the candles that I make, um, then definitely watch the first part. And then the last part of the video will outline uh, my feedback. So if this is something that you're interested in, then I hope that you're subscribed and I hope that you keep on watching. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is just put on my gloves and I am using a lot of jars for this, or tins I should say, that I ended up not wanting to make into tins to sell because they have little defects on them, but they work perfectly fine for test jars, uh, for test candles. So I'm just gonna be taking my rubbing alcohol and just a paper towel, and I'm gonna be wiping out all of my tins. Some of the jars do already have um, wicks in them, and sometimes what I'll end up doing is just saving the um, ones that I get the wicks a little bit off center uh, for my test candles um, because they're not too off center that they would really mess up the candles. They're just like a little bit off centered and it's just not to where I would want to sell the candle to my customers. Um, or sometimes if I get a little bit too much glue, um, I will keep that as well for a test candle just kind of little defects like see this one's a little bit off centered um so i just decided not to make it into a candle to sell um but anyways the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna take my permatex and you see this one has a dent um which is very common with shipping but i'm gonna just take my permatex and i'm gonna put just a little bead um, and I just use the Permatex Clear Adhesive um, Silicone and my wicks do not go anywhere. But I will say um, that I am experimenting with using the wick tabs in my larger jars because I know that um, it's very hard to remove these wicks that are adhered with the Permatex. Um, and I do want my clients to be able to reuse and repurpose their vessels. So I am definitely working on that. Um, but my number one um, thing is safety. So I always want to make sure that my product is safe and that's why I do use this. Let's see, I want just a little tiny bit more glue on this one. Um, because I do not want my wicks coming up at all so i'd rather the product be really safe but i am working on that testing um with my other jars so that they can be reused got about 26 ounces there so 
always hard to believe that all this wax will fit in this little Presto pot, but I promise you it does. And see, sometimes you'll spill a little bit too. Um, so I generally will do um, a little bit more than I actually need for my candles, so that way I don't run short of wax. And then what I'm gonna do is just tip this with the very last bits out of here into my bowl. I'm just gonna plug in my Presto Pot and I'm just gonna take this to about 200, uh, maybe a little bit under, because I wanna let this wax get to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit and then I'm going to cool it to 185 and that's the temperature that I will be adding in my fragrance oil. But what we're gonna do is use these little pouring pitchers um, that I get on Amazon to do the small um, individuals because we're just doing one um, candle, one test candle for each fragrance. So I'm going to shoot the temperature of our wax here and I'm wanting this to get to about 200 and yet we are above 200 so I'm definitely gonna cut the heat. And I wanna add my fragrance oil at 185 but what I'm gonna wanna do is actually pour this wax into my pitchers um, a little bit warmer than that because I want it to, um, I wanna add my fragrance at that temperature. So I'm gonna get it into these pitchers um, relatively soon because it's gonna cool pretty fast. Just tear out my scale again here. Doing 5.5 ounces of wax really helps to get this warmer than you actually need it so that you can have whoop that's just a little bit too much there um, but it really helps to get this a little bit warmer than you actually need it so that you can have ample time um, to add in look at we just did it again um, your fragrance Let's take a little bit out again. There we go. Um, and so I am now going to tear this out again. And I'm going to be adding in my fragrance on the scale. Um, but I want this to be at 185 when I add in my fragrance. So let's see where we are at temperature wise. Okay, so we are at about 186, and that is gonna be close enough uh, for me. So I'm gonna do my first one here. I'm gonna do this vanilla eggnog. Let's see if we're in focus. And I'm gonna be adding 0.55 ounces. So I'm doing a 10% load. And I'm gonna do my guilty habit of pouring this straight down my stick thermometer. your measurement um, as well and I'm gonna be stirring this for two minutes um, and I do always like to stir my fragrances for a full two minutes um, I know some wax types you can get away with stirring them for less um, but with 464 two minutes is generally a good amount just to make sure that that fragrance fully incorporates um, with your wax and that 185 with your 464 wax is your magical number because that's the number where your fragrance molecules are fully expanded um, and it's just that perfect temperature to be adding in your fragrance oil. This is smelling so amazing! This vanilla eggnog is like coming to life. It is like coming to life here. Right, and we're gonna be tearing out our scale again here and adding 5.5 ounces of wax. Nice and slow here at the end, there we go. And then we're gonna um, shoot the temperature of our wax here. And 
then I'm just gonna leave it on the scale because I'm actually gonna be tearing it again and just adding my fragrance. But I wanna make sure it gets to that magical 185 and we're actually at 186, but that is gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna tear our scale again here and then I'm gonna add our campfire marshmallow. So I'm gonna do 0.55 ounces and then I'm just gonna pour this down my stick thermometer. I know it is my guilty habit. Um, you can definitely use a glass stirring rod is what I would recommend um, for this. Okay, just a little bit more here. There we go. I am just stirring in my fragrance with a chopstick and you can totally do that as well uh, for these smaller batches. I do tend to use like a spatula when I'm doing a bigger batch, but I have definitely seen a lot of reputable candle makers um, stir even bigger batches just with a chopstick. So you could definitely do that, but I do always like to stir for a full two minutes just so that fragrance and wax can fully bind um, with 464, but each wax type you do want to look at your Manufacturer to see the recommended amount of time um, That you want to stir for your fragrance oil And this is smelling so amazing. This is the campfire marshmallow fragrance If you can see that and then I'm gonna set this off to the side and let this cool and um, I'm gonna do my next fragrance. So I'm gonna be letting these cool to between 135 and 145 in Fahrenheit. And that's the temperature um, that I like to pour my wax at, my 464. doing this black cardamom and cream next. I'm so excited. This was one of my absolute favorite ones. I can't wait to smell like the whole room be filled with this aroma. Again, 0.55 ounces. So we're pouring the campfire marshmallow candle right now here. And then next up, I'm gonna pour the vanilla eggnog. These little pouring pitchers that I get on Amazon, they work so well for this. They're like made for lattes, but they're absolutely perfect if you are looking for something smaller so that you don't have to dirty up like a big four pound pitcher when you're just making um, your test candles. There, so I'm gonna have to pour a little bit back in. Okay, 5.45. So this next one is gonna be the woodland snow. This is smelling so good. The camper notes are coming out and I can smell the mint. And oh my goodness, this is so magical.
the woodland snow. It smells absolutely beautiful. Just such a luxurious fragrance. It's like a like a winter lodge in the most sophisticated and upscale way. I am in love with how this is filling my room. So the first one um, that I want to talk about is this Campfire Marshmallow. And before I said that this fragrance reminded me of one that I had smelled from Aztec that was called Marshmallow Fireside. I don't know if this is going to focus or not. There we go. Um, but it reminded me of Marshmallow Fireside from Aztec. But I will say that I like this one a little bit more, um, but not very much more. So when I was burning this candle, I did notice that it had a stronger hot throw than the Marshmallow Fireside from Aztec, but not much stronger. So I would still like to find a Campfire Marshmallow that throws better in 464 soy or in a natural wax. Um, if you do use a paraffin or a parasoy, I would recommend checking out this Campfire Marshmallow. But otherwise, I would say that it's nice and it is a little bit better than the Aztec Marshmallow Fireside in terms of HT, but it's still weaker than I would like to see in um, my candles. And the next one I want to talk about is Vanilla Eggnog. And this is one that I really liked out of the bottle. I thought that it had a nice amount of spices to it. Um, and burning, it smelled a lot different to me than it did out of the bottle. So when I was burning this fragrance, I did pick up a lot more of the sweet notes and kind of almost like, oh my gosh, it's October fragrance. Um, almost like graham cracker notes, but I didn't get as much of the spices and vanilla eggnog. I will say that I enjoyed this fragrance, this vanilla eggnog, but um, I did wish that it smelled more like it does out of the bottle because out of the bottle and on the blotter strips, I like this one a lot more. And I will also say that this one discolored a lot when I was burning it. Um, like the, uh, I don't know if you can see my test candle, but you see how the rim is kind of orange. Um, if you use tins, you're probably gonna wanna seal them if you use this fragrance, this vanilla eggnog, um, because likely due to the vanillin content in this one, as well as maybe the cinnamon. Um, this one did discolor for me. And um, so that's definitely something to just kind of be aware of. So I will consider adding this to my line, but it's definitely, um, it was not my favorite um, of these scents and I'm not sold on it. Um, I do like the eggnog better, I think from candles and supplies at this point. Um, and the one, the vanilla nutmeg from Stone Candles. Um, I do like better than this vanilla eggnog um, from Candle Science. So this fragrance, I would give, I would give it a six to seven out of 10 star rating. Um, maybe I should start rating these. Um, let me know in the comments if you think I should give star ratings, but I would give this one a six to seven out of 10. And I would give the Campfire Marshmallow about the same score. Um, maybe I would give it a seven to an eight out of 10, just because um, it is a little stronger than the best one that I found so far from Aztec. So let's talk about this Persimmon Citron fragrance. And this one, I did not like as much out of the bottle, but this one burning, um, I just kept going back to. Uh, just so you can see my test candle here. Um, I just kept going back to this one 
and I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, I feel like a lot of the more artificial kind of notes that I was getting out of the bottle, when this one was burning, it smelled much more like festive to me and fruity and I definitely picked up more of the authentic citrus smells that I was wishing that I had gotten out of the bottle when I smelled this one. Um, so this persimmon citron, I would give a solid 8 out of 10 and I would consider adding this one to my line. Um, the hot throw on this one, I would say was also very good. I would give this one a 9 out of 10 for HT. <laughs> Should we score the other ones too? Um, the Campfire Marshmallow I would give for HT, um, I would give this one a 5 out of 10, and the Vanilla Eggnog I would give a 7 out of 10 for HT. The next one I want to talk about is this Red Berry Balsam, and this was my least favorite um, out of the bottle, and I would definitely say that I had the same experience burning this fragrance as I did out of the bottle. Um, it did smell a little bit better burning, but it was very similar to me as it smelled out of the bottle, where it just was very artificial um, in a way, like it was too sweet. And there was something that was really competing with the balsam notes. Um, it was very heavy in like the red berry department. And to me, it takes away from the true, like natural, authentic, kind of vibe that I was hoping to get from this one, coupled with a little bit of festive, like tart red berries. Um, so I would still have to say that this is my least favorite. I would give this fragrance a three out of 10 in terms of liking it. And in terms of HT, I would give this one an eight out of 10. And I would say the HT is good. And I can definitely see people liking this fragrance. Like, don't get me wrong. It's just that it's not my taste. Um, yeah. Okay, next let's talk about this orchard pear. And this orchard pear, um, I liked out of the bottle. I really thought it was a beautiful pear scent. Um, I wanted to love this in a candle. I do still like their brandied pear better, but I thought that this would make a really nice soap and also a really nice candle, like maybe something for spring or summer even, because it's a really bright, um, it's a really fresh, bright, beautiful pear out of the bottle. But this one in a candle, um, it barely picked up for me um, in a candle. And I did burn this several times. Um, and the CT, it almost has no CT even. Um, like I smell the soy wax more than I smell the pear. Um, so I'm really disappointed in this one. Uh, this is definitely like, surprising to me too because usually like the fruity fragrances do really well um so i did add my fragrance at 185 um like i always do and i use 10 percent same wax blend same curing time same wicks so i'm not really sure why this one was so light um but i'm curious if any of you have tried it or uh, if you plan on trying it uh, just be aware of that experience that I had with it. It just was very, very light. So I would say hot throw wise, I would give this one a three out of 10 and um, maybe even a two out of 10. And overall, I would give this one, I couldn't really give it much higher because it does actually accelerate, I believe in soap as well. Um, if that's not correct, I'll put the correct thing on the screen, but I do believe it accelerates trace um, and cold process soap. So it's beautiful out of the bottle. I really liked it, but I can't recommend this one. And I definitely, um, from my experience using it in my test candles, would not want to add this one to my candle line. Next, I want to talk about black cardamom and cream. And black cardamom and cream is a really unique fragrance. It's beautiful burning. Um, it's definitely lighter than I would have liked in terms of the hot throw. So I am gonna still consider adding it to my candle line because I think that it's a really unique fragrance. You get a great balance when it's burning of the black cardamom and the cream, and it's really a rich cream. The black cardamom is so exotic smelling. It's like a luxe, like, Big or something. Um, it's almost like Mediterranean, like a luxury tea. Um, you get at like a fancy Mediterranean restaurant. Um, I really liked this one. I just wish it were a little bit stronger burning. Um, so I would give this a, I would give this fragrance a nine out of 10 in terms of um, uniqueness and um, that I'm considering it. 
but I would say that this one, um, hot throw wise, would be about a six out of 10. Okay, and the last one is Woodland Snow. And I am so thrilled that this one impressed me as much as it did, um, because this was also my favorite. If any of you watched my video smelling these out of the bottle, this Woodland Snow was also my favorite. And this one, did not disappoint whatsoever when it was burning. Um, it has a nice strong hot throw and you get such a, oh my God, I just whacked myself in the face, but I'm doing so good, you guys. This is the first time out of the whole video. Um, okay, hold on a second. But anyways, you get such a good balance of the snow and this exotic like smoke, not a smoke in your hair type of a smoke. It's like a luxury like winter retreat or something. Um, this is such a high-end smelling fragrance uh, to me personally. Like I would definitely um, pay a lot of money to get this fragrance. And you get such an intriguing balance. Like this is almost like, oh my gosh, it's so different than anything I have smelled before. And you get like the pine notes to it, but you get like this smoky incense to it as well. And it smells cold almost, if that makes any sense at all. There's definitely some camphor that I pick up in this fragrance. And um, I wish that there were a little bit less camphor. That would be my only critique on this one. Um, I might mix it with something just to kind of bring out more of what I like about it and minimize the camphor a little bit. But honestly, this one is definitely a standalone fragrance and I would give it 10 out of 10 for uniqueness and I would give it a nine out of 10 for hot throw. Well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think that covers all seven fragrances. Comment down below which one you're looking forward to trying most. And I'm really excited about maybe adding the black cardamom and cream as well as definitely the woodland snow to my winter line this year. And the persimmon citron and the vanilla eggnog are ones that I'm also gonna be considering. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And thank you so much for all of your comments. I love chatting with you all in the comments. Um, so definitely like leave me a comment, ask me anything, and I would love to connect with you. And thank you so much for watching and happy candle making.